Uh, welcome, everyone. So this is our 85th live stream geometry. We have five other people uh, besides me here with us. And today I'm going to go over more problems from the geometry discussions and problems uh, Discord server. So I don't know who exactly it is that runs that Discord server. Um, hardly anything about them, really, but it has some really good problems. Um, Stefan just told me today uh, that most of them are actually taken from other competitions. A small number might be original, um, but they're, they're really, really good um, problems. A lot of them have very simple statements, but yet they're still very difficult to solve. Um, so if you'd like to join us in the future, um, feel free to email me at mgreenb801 at gmail.com. Uh, it's, it's in the description of my video. And we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Uh, just a moment. Can you all see it? Okay, so this problem, Stefan said he already did that one, but I'm going to try this one. Um, so this is a, another isogonal. So last time we did an isogonal conjugate problem, and this time we'll see if we can do it again but a different one. So we have a triangle ABC with altitude AH and angle bisector AK. And then, so we end up, so I'm, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because we, we end up creating like a parallelogram. So uh, let me do it like this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually start by drawing points P and Q because I think it'll, it might make things easier. So right now they're off the page, um, but they're the reflections of A over B and C. And looks like Yash is also joining. Okay, so this is P and this is Q. And the midpoint of PQ should be B. All right. So AH is the altitude of ABC and AK is the angle bisector. All right. Guess I'll draw on these just for the heck of it. All right, so we have the altitude, uh, we have the angle bisector. So this is point H. And this will be point K. And AK meets HD at L. Okay, so we want to show K and L are isogonal conjugates in triangle APQ. So for those of you that don't know what isogonal conjugates are, um, hold on just a moment. So when we say H and L are isogonal conjugates, uh, that means angle APH is equal to angle QPL and angle AQ. Um, I'm sorry, angle APK is QPL and ACK is PQL. Um, and also angle PAH equals angle QAL. So all three of those things are true when K and L are isogonal conjugates. Uh, well, actually we know angle PAK is angle QAL because we know this is the angle bisector. So, so one of the three things is trivial. Um, PAK is QAL. That's trivial, but then showing, we have to show one of the other two, and then the third would, would be true. All right. Interesting. So it's probably worth drawing PK and PL because we want to show those angles are equal. Uh, thanks for joining, Sardar. Uh, 
All right. I don't think APK and BPL are similar, but let me check. Sorry. Yeah, this angle looks bigger. So that's 116. And I think this is, oops, this is probably less than that. Yeah, 103. Okay, so yeah, how do we show that these angles are equal right here? This one and this one. Uh, extend AK to meet B, uh, PQ. Okay. Draw then also AH, uh, extend the AH and the AK to meet okay. PQ. It is much more natural to think uh, that uh, APQ is the like main triangle. Yeah, I agree. So you can see that uh, K is actually the midpoint of AF. Yes. And we want to show that uh, PL and PK are isogonal. So we want to show that PL is the C-median of triangle APF. And that looks uh, like uh, very good with ratios. Since we want to show that uh, AL over LF, um, yeah, that is equal to a AP over PF whole thing squared. Okay. And then uh, we can use Menelaus, uh, I think, in triangle AEF. Okay. And we will get that AL or LF is DE or DF. Oh, because AH is equal to HE. Yeah. Okay. So we can probably uh, work with the DE or DF much easier. Yeah, I think, yeah. And then DE over DF, that looks like it's a calculation because D is the midpoint. Um, F is the foot of the angle bisector. Um, so yeah, but maybe there's a way, let's see, DE over DF, yeah. Is there, maybe there's another way to transform that using like projected geometry. So let's see. If we project through L maybe, so. But yeah, no, I agree. That's like the best way to start this. So yeah, we want to show PL is a median in triangle APF because we know PK is a median. So AL over L. Circumcenter of APQ. Uh, the circumcenter of APQ. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I thought the L goes through. Yeah. Oh, sorry. But the uh, circumcenter, uh, circumcircle can stay. We can use. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking if we want to show PL as a median here, I don't know if drawing the tangents really does much. I'm just going to try it though and see. So yeah, we'd want to show PL pass through this point, but I think that might just make it harder. So I like, I agree the ratios way is better. Um, so EF over FD, when we project through, let's see. Oh, we, we might be able to project through K. Can you intersect AF with circumcircle? Uh, AF, yes. Um, oh, whoops, I gotta change the way I made the problem. I gotta move B and C. 
So yeah, AF is gonna meet the circle at the midpoint of arc BC. Guess that's good enough. There we go, that looks a little better. Actually, I think I already drew, I just, yeah, I don't like drawing things twice if I can avoid it. Call this M. So EF over FD, EF is 2HK. And we know that like HK over FD is, is like HL over LD. Maybe we could do something with that. Okay. Uh, uh, it's enough to prove that AF, L, M is harmonic because MP is tan tangent to circumcircle of APF. Okay. And uh, this is true because we can project through D onto AE. Ah, nice. Okay. So basically MP is tangent to this circle is what you're saying. And then... We want to prove it. Okay. And it's true because of harmonic bundle. Uh, AL, uh, AF, LM is harmonic. Okay. So, it's true because uh, projecting from D. Okay. So hold on just a second. So we want to show that PL is a semedian here, right? Um, yeah. And uh, so are, are you trying to do that using ratios or? I'm not ratios. Uh, I want to prove that AF LM is harmonic and it's enough. If we prove it, we are done. So oh. we project ALFM onto line AE, and V projected from D. L goes to H, F goes to E, A goes to him uh, itself, M goes to infinity. Okay, because once we show this is harmonic, that would mean that L lies on the polar of M, uh, which would then mean that like this is a semedian. I, I see what you're saying. Okay, all right. Um, because since MP is tangent, if L lies on the polar of M, then that means if we extend PL, uh, this would also be tangent. And so then, uh, then that would be a semedian. Interesting. Okay. I like that. So we've avoided most, almost all calculation there. All right. So, um, Actually, do we even need point E then? I don't think we do. Um, we use it, use it from projecting from D. Oh, when we project from D. Okay, so uh, we're projecting ALFM onto AE. So yeah, that's that's uh, one. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, so let let AH and AK. PQ at ENF. All right. And then um, I think all the other points, but let AF meet the circle at M. Oops. All right, um, so uh, first I'll say projecting through D onto AE. So 
we have um, AFLM. is equal to that cross ratio, uh, that would be A, E, H, infinity. And then the, this is the point at infinity. And that will equal negative one. And that's since uh, H is the midpoint of AE. All right, and, and then, so, so this means that L lies on the polar of M. Uh, with respect to the circle, I think it was AP, A, not APQ, A, APF. So this is in my video number two on poles and polars. So if you have a point outside a circle and you draw a line and it, it um, meets the circle in two points and there's another point on that segment, then if this cross ratio is negative one, then that means this point lies on the polar of this point. Um, and then also MP is tangent to APF and that's, uh, not a hard angle chase because angle MPF um, MPF is angle MPQ, which is angle MAQ, which is angle MAP. And so that implies MP is tangent to the circle APQ. Let me break this up into two lines. See if that, whoops, that does not work. Let's try this. And if that doesn't work, I'll try something else. Uh, it always, I don't know why it does that. It always looks, okay. So let's try this. Um, that should work, I think. There we go. Um, so actually let, let me just switch the order in which I prove these things. So first we show that MP is tangent, then we show L is on the polar. And so that means that, um, basically like if you extended PL, then that means that, um, so yeah, this, this means that PL passes through the other point of tangency from M. And that means that um, PL is a median in triangle APF. Actually, I could probably just do it in terms of harmonic quadrilaterals, but oh well. Um, and then this, this means that, um, so PK is a median triangle APF. Um, and then that means that angle APK equals angle CPL. And then similarly, I'm just gonna make it symmetric. I mean, we kind of already know from there that the right orthogonal conjugates is K and L and bisector, but I'll just say it this way because I think it looks nicer. Similarly, um, angle uh, AQK equals angle uh, B, BQL. And that means that 
okay. L R I sogonal conjugates and triangle APQ. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next problem. Thanks for that solution. Um, I would like to ask you how do you know that the curve ratio A of LM is equal to minus one? Um, so uh, th this one, right? AEH uh, infinity. Mm -hmm. So H is the midpoint of AE. Um, so it's like, let's say you have, so like this, this would be AH over EH. So, so AH over EH is one because H is the midpoint of AE, right? Mm -hmm. But then let's say you have a point like really, really far away, like almost infinitely far away on line AE. Then if you take the distance to E and the distance to A, the ratio of those would like approach one, right? Mm -hmm. As that point gets like infinitely far away. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uh, what? Yeah, I just said that I understand. Okay. All right. Thanks. So, yeah, feel free to ask questions if you don't know stuff like that. Um, I am more than okay explaining. So, let's try this one. Um, let me just make this look a little nicer. All right, so we have, um, yeah, this is a little bit more complicated of a statement, I feel like. So yeah, triangle ABC, O is the circumcenter. So I mentioned this to uh, a few other people that were on earlier, but um, there's a hurricane that's coming to where I live. Um, and I'm not 100% sure if it's going to end up uh, hitting my area, but there's a, a good chance. So the power might go out. I don't know for sure. But if the power goes out where I end up staying, um, then it's possible I wouldn't be able to have a session next week. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I think it's probably most likely that I'll have it. All right, so that's W. Um, all right, I'm gonna draw the tangents for the tangent. And needs to be C of T. Uh, T O meets M N at Z. So M and N are the midpoints of A, B, and A, C. All right. So yeah, this is an interesting configuration. TO, we wanna see where it intersects MN. So this is point Z. And WY is perpendicular to AZ. And Y is on AZ. All right. So this is point Y and we want to show WYB equals WYC. So this looks like it might be a harmonic thing. So I might want to extend AZ to meet BC if I have to guess. So first let me draw in a couple things. Uh, I don't think that ends up actually passing through point N. So let me draw it a little better. Uh, Oh yeah, and, and like, that's the other thing. Um, the intersection point could be on line AZ. It's, it's probably easiest to draw like this. Um, let's see. Oh, I just drew the segment AZ. 
I really want to draw the ray AZ. So let me um, all right. Then that'll be point Y. Yeah, I think it looks better like this. And then I could draw this point right here. And basically we wanna we want to show that B, W, C, and B are in harmonic conjugation. That would be equivalent to the problem. Um, so um, T, yeah, so we have that. this and this and all right I don't think these are parallel but I'll move around the diagram a little bit to check wow I feel like I have to hide a lot of stuff here <laughs> But yeah, I don't think TZ and BY are parallel. No, they're not. Can you intersect OM and ON with AT? Okay. Um, hold on just a second. Okay, OM and ON with AT. Um, so yeah, right now ON would be far away. Let's see if I can change it. So that ON and AT intersect uh, a little closer. So yeah, obviously OM is perpendicular to AB and ON, let's see. That will intersect, yeah, it's gonna be a little hard to draw that. Let's see if I can do it. Um, to shrink the diagram a little bit, and I should be able to do it. Just have to make room for a couple things. Okay, we are done. You just have to prove that T A E and the other intersection is harmonic, and this is obvious. Oh, really? Wow, that was fast. Okay. Um, we want to prove that BC WD is harmonic because WYD is 90 degree. Right. And we project them uh, BWCD from O. Actually, we project MN Z, Z and the intersection of AW with MN. Okay. So hold on just a second. So we project through O. Um, Can you first name intersection of AW with MN? Um, uh, uh, what with MN? AW? AW, yeah. Okay. And now we want to prove that BZ MN is harmonic bundle. And we project it from O. Onto AT. Okay. And uh, these are harmonic, obviously, because BE and CF are tangents. BE and CF are tangent. Okay. So, so this is just an in center configuration. Yeah. So EF, e, B, and CF. Oh, wow. That was very fast. Good job on that one. So I'm going to type it up um, as quick as I can. Yeah, and then let's, we can try moving on to a harder one. So yeah, the, the middle riddles we solve like quickly and then the riddles are like end up being super hard. So we'll see um, how one of the riddles goes. But um, so let OM and ON intersect a, T, and E, and F. Okay. 
and let AZ intersect BC at B. AZ. Okay. And then uh, then we project through A onto MN. So BCWD um, is equal to uh, we have BCWZ is equal to MNGZ. And then we project through O onto AT. So I'll just write this right below it. Uh, then we have um, MNGZ uh, is equal to um, I forgot what I forgot what I called this uh, E F A. Um, EFAT. All right. And this is harmonic. This is equal to negative one because basically, if you extended E, B, and E, C to meet at a point, then A, then um, O would be like the end center. And so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say extend EB to meet FC. So, so, so yeah, first of all, EB and FC are tangent to ABC. Um, How do they know that, that EB and FC are tangent? Uh, we know they're tangent because EA and FA are tangent and OE um, like M is the midpoint of AB and N is the midpoint of AC. So by symmetry, like if you, since EA is tangent, if you reflect A over OE, then EB has to be tangent. Oh, wow. but, so I'll say our tangent to ABC, uh, since M and N are the midpoints of AB and AC. All right. So if um, so, if you extend, so I'll, I'm not going to draw this out. But if, if basically, if you extend EB and FC uh, to meet at a point K, then And basically, um, uh, the a, then ABC is the end circle of K, that circle, end circle of finally of K with end center O. Once we know that, then that means that EC, FB, and AK concur. Concur at the Jergon point of triangle EFK. And that means that. Uh, EF, that means that EFAT is harmonic. And that means that uh, BCWZ is harmonic. And that means that angle WYB is equal to angle WYC. Uh, 
sense angle um, WYB is 90. Shouldn't there be BC OED in the corporation? Yeah, yeah, yeah this should be D, not, yeah, you're right. Um, is that uh, the, also before oh, there should be D? WYB equals 90. So, sorry, hold on one second. All right. Uh, um, oh, sorry, Simon. Did you say something else? Well, yes. That in the in the third line, projecting through A onto M N, um, there should be B C V D as well. Oh, you're right. Good point. Thanks for noticing that. And this one should be W Y B. All right. Good. Good catch. Thanks, Simon. I have an even easier proof for this problem. Oh yeah. Yeah, project through O onto a circle with diameter AO. Okay. Then, uh, then we will have a uh, MAN and intersection of OT with that circle. But uh, it is a known configuration that that point would be the um, Dumpty point, I think it is called. Mm -hmm. And it lies on the C median, basically, and that's it. Okay, so, okay, so um, if you intersect OZ with this circle, it would be the dumpy point, um, and, and it lies on the median, so that's a harmonic quadrilateral is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Very cool. So you have two different ways of doing it. All right. So I'll move, I'll, I'll move on to a harder problem now. Let's I'd like see. to ask you. Um, how do you know that FAAP is harmonic? That FA, um, EFAT? Oh, oh, sorry, EFAT, right. Um, so basically, I, I didn't draw E, B, and F, C and extend them to meet at a point K. But basically, in general, let's say, so I'll just draw a little mini figure here. Let's say I have a triangle and then I have an in-circle um, so so it's whenever I have an in-circle, these three always concur. And you can prove that by Cheva. It's not hard. There's probably other ways to do it too. But basically by Cheva's theorem, like these three always concur because HP equals HL, IP equals IK, and JK equals JL. Mm -hmm. So if you do Cheva, it ends up JL over LH times HP over PI times this over this, it equals one, right? Mm -hmm. So they meet at a point. So then using projective geometry, if those meet at a point, then that always means that these four points uh, are in harmonic conjugation, I, J, K, and Q. Oh, I understand. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, it's um, kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've used it, like, especially like right around when I hit video 100, like I, I use that fact in like so many problems all at once, like about the end circle. Um, whoops. But so yeah, basically, Yeah, if I extended E, B, and F, C, um, then I would have this that same in circle configuration, and so those would have to be harmonic. And how does it imply that the, the angle W, Y, B is equal to W, Y, C? Um, so basically, if you look at B, C, W, and B, um, whenever you have like a right angle, so like W, Y, B equals 90, if these four points, B, C, W, and D are in harmonic conjugation and, and this angle is 90, then this is always an angle bisector. Um, I actually, so if you look at my video on, I think my second video, video number two on projective geometry, um, like earlier on, on my channel, uh, oh, that I prove it in that video. I think I remember that. All right. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I will move. So this one is supposed to be harder. And Stefan said this actually might was a, an IMO shortlist prompt previously. So I don't know if any of you have already seen it, um, but it looks really interesting. So we have a triangle ABC and we have a point P inside of it. Um, and then we reflect it across all three sides. So one, two, I wonder if that triangle is similar to ABC. No, it doesn't look like it's similar. Um, but then we draw the circumcircle of that. So I'm, I'm gonna have to rename those points, and just, but I'll do it in just a second. So, um, and then we draw, basically we draw these three rays. And it meets at A2, B2, and C2. So yeah, I think we only really probably need to draw two out of the three rays, because then the other the other part would follow. Um, so I'm just going to draw two out of the three for now. And now let me name everything right. So this would be A1. Uh, this would be uh, B1, and that would be C1. And let's see, so A1T, so I'm gonna draw B1T and C1T, I already did, and they meet it at B2 and C2. And we want to show, so AA2 would follow by the same argument, but we want to show that BB2 and CC2 uh, meet on this circle right here. Um, so let me see if I can make a nice diagram. That looks pretty nice. Um, we want to show that BB2 and CC2 uh, meet on that circle. So from there, it looks like they do, but that's what we have to prove. All right. So I'm going to draw the midpoints here. Um, I'll just draw this point, but yeah, we have to remember we don't actually know G lies on the circle, so. Yeah, I don't know if I wanna let this meet the circle and then I show that these are collinear, um, but yeah. Hold on just one second, I'll be right back. All right, thanks for waiting. So can obviously a homology. Oh, what? Can you define G as intersection of the uh, circumcircle, the B, A, 1, C, and the uh, omega? I think they can coincide. Okay, B, A, 1, C. Interesting. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a much more symmetric way to do it. And then we want to show that these are collinear. Yeah, I like that. The other symmetric ones also pass through G. 
AB1C and AC1B. Interesting. Uh, as I remember, this is just angle chasing. Okay. So those like all concur on this circle, that's probably an angle chase. So yeah, we could try to show that B2, B, and G are collinear. Um, And I wonder if that's just an angle chase, because basically we want to show BGA is B2GA. Oh, but B2GA is not that easy. Do you think, like once we draw this circle, do you think it, it helps to have the other circles or I'm not sure? Obviously, DEF is homothetic to C1, B1, A1. Okay, now the uh, angle B2, GA1 equals to uh, B2, B1. A1 and it equals to uh, TEF, it equals to TCF and it equals to BCA1 and it equals to uh, BC1A1. So we are done. I see. Very cool. Okay. So, um, so, oh, I already forgot. B, we're looking at BGF. Or uh, we are looking at uh, B two C one A one. B two C one A one A one. Yeah, it equals to B two B one A one. It equals to T E F, the T C F, B C A one and B C one A one. Okay, so so yeah, B two G A one, right? Uh, so. Uh, uh, I should have said BGA1. I said BC1A1. It should be BGA1. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, so, so I'm going to write this out. So, um, so yeah, there's a couple things we have to prove. So I'm, I'm not going to do them all. So eventually I'll, I'll type it all out, but I'm going to start with that. So we have, uh, we have angle. B2 GA1 is equal to angle B2 B1 A1, which is equal to angle T B1 A1. By the way, the intersections uh, of circles uh, are just points at that point. If you take a performance homotopy, center that T with ratio one over two, it becomes Poinsett point of T, A, B, C. Oh, really? Okay. So I will write this all up and just very, very interesting. So, um, so T, E, F is, um, Okay, so, so yeah, eventually we want to show that 
BGA1. So, um, oh, oh wait, once we know this is TB1A1, oh, TEF is TCF. Okay. And then, which is equal to, um, Because yeah, ultimately we want to show that this is uh, BGA1. But um, so, so, so yeah, that, that, that would be BCA1. So yeah, basically this is the like total angle chase. So, this means that B2, B, and G are collinear. All right, let's see if we can find a harder. <laughs> yeah, there's just no knowing how easy or hard these are. Um, all right. Okay, so first of all, so you're saying that these all concur. They basically, if you do a homophony with ratio half, so, so I, I actually forget, what is a pawn slip point? So it's like you have point P and then you have triangle DEF, right? Yeah, if you take uh, nine point circles of BTC, BTA, ATC, and pedal circle of T, they concur. Okay. So the nine point circles Point circles of uh, BTA, um, CT, CTA, and BTC concur on the circum circle of. Uh, the uh, so this is the pawn slit point T so yeah that's just like a lot of angle chasing but so yeah there's a general fact that if you have any point P in a triangle ABC and you draw these three nine point circles they concur and they meet on the circumcircle of the pedal um, triangle of T. So if you drop the perpendiculars D, E, and F, they, they meet on the circumcircle of that. So that's a lot of angle chasing, um, but there's a Wikipedia article on it. So you can look up that article on the pawn slip point. Um, so, Basically, you draw those nine point circles, and then you're saying you do a homophony with ratio two. Um, so that would take um, so a homophony centered at T with ratio two. It takes D, E, F to the circle A, 1, B, 1, C, 1, but then these other circles, uh, or the nine point circles of those, it would take to, okay, the circum, yeah, all right. So a homothety with ratio two centered at T, takes these circles to, um, so BTA, um, the nine point circle of that would go to ABC1 to ABC1, uh, BCA1, C, A, B, one, and omega. So,
So those concur at a point G. All right. Let's move this down to make it look nicer. And then we have this angle chase. So similarly, C, C2 and G and A, A2 and G are collinear and concur at G. So that, then that, that solves the problem. AA2, BB2, and CC2 concur on omega G. All right. So let's try the next riddle. See if it's a harder riddle. Um, Takes a while. There we go. 